I'm ideally looking for. I'm ideally. <laughs> I can't say that word. I'm ideally. Yeah. I'm ideally looking for. Oh, I'm really looking for a bit of forestry area. <laughs> So it's about five to eight. I didn't get the best sleep last night. Because I'm still a bit uncomfortable in here. Uh, but I was warm enough. Got my hot water bottle, which is an absolute winner. Um, I found a lovely spot in a little bit of woodland that I found. Uh, where my tent was pretty much invisible when the uh, light dropped. Which was very surprising. Because it's bright red. <laughs> Right, there's a little wooden bit that I stayed in last night. There was a bit where a car was hanging around for about an hour. And I think they were parked here. All I heard was an exhaust stop and just stay there. And I thought, shit, I'm on private line. Someone's going to kick me off. And then they stayed there for about an hour, an hour and a half. They freaked me out. They left eventually. But yeah, that must have been where they were parked. But look at the view this morning. So, things I've learned. Number one, no matter how well you pack your bag at home, always leave a bit of extra space. So when you pack it up in the morning, when you're leaving your tent, it's not gonna be quite as neat and perfect. God knows I tried this morning, but somehow I've eaten some food and I've drank some water, but I've got a little less room than I did in there yesterday. So I'll try and figure that one out. Two, don't over push yourself on the first day. I really didn't want to travel that far yesterday. Am I going the right way? No. I really didn't want to travel that far yesterday. Uh, but a lack of fresh water supply kind of pushed me on a bit further. And today my legs and my feet are aching. So the point where at the moment, I'm almost limping because they ache, but I know that's just my body warming up in the morning. It'll be fine in 10, 15 minutes, yeah. Three, like I said this morning, just take it easy. I was planning to do this whole thing in four days five maybe if I didn't have time but at the moment I'm not even bothered if I complete it just as long as I'm out here for a couple of nights enjoying myself because if you're not enjoying yourself what's the point I got up at well I got up at lots of different hours <laughs> last night it was freezing and windy but uh, I eventually got up around five then half five then six and I said to myself yesterday I said to everyone yesterday that wants to get an earlier start uh, to cover some more miles but it was raining and it was windy and I was freezing and the thought of getting out the tent was really getting me down I just didn't want to do it I, I was forcing myself to it and I just thought at one point why why are you forcing yourself to do that just take an extra hour in bed I checked the weather and the rain was going to stop which it has take your extra hour get a bit more rest stay warm and then you'll wake up not hating this journey which is what I was starting to do. I was thinking, why have I come on this? I'm not enjoying myself. But in reality is, when I'm walking like this and when I'm taking my time and looking at the scenery and visiting little places, I do enjoy it. I didn't enjoy it when it was a marathon run from end to end. So today, I'm gonna take my time. If there's a little village I'm passing by, I'm gonna go into it, especially since I didn't get any hot food or hot drink yesterday. So yeah, today is all about enjoyment and exploration. And uh, yeah, it looks like a pretty good place to do it. Because I'm doing this for the charity mind, I'd always say I had to talk about what's going on in my head when I'm on these walks. And one of my biggest concerns about this walk was the factor of loneliness. I think I like being around people well, I know I like being around people. So the thought of being on my own for four or five days, when some people would see it as like an escape and time to have time to yourself, I was a bit more concerned. But I tell you what, I've seen maybe four or five other people walking on this route in total yesterday. No one today. I'm just surrounded by nothing. And I'm loving it. I'm absolutely enjoying the peace. It's fantastic. Yeah.
It's my two cents on that. One thing I can do now the fog's lifted is finally get this thing in the air. Look at this place. No one ever told me a pig farm sounds like someone getting tortured in Mordor. I don't know why I do that. I just do. And there's windmills I can see in the distance before. And now just here. And I think this is the... I think this is the highest point I'm at today. It's definitely the highest point for the next 10 miles. And there's no wind today, so it's not cold. I've got this jumper on, but uh, yeah, temperature's just right. 59 and a half miles to go. Whoop, whoop. Unfortunately, part of my backpack is broken. The bit which connects the right shoulder strap to the bag has just completely come off which means my bag's hanging to the left, which isn't good at all. I think that means it's the end of the day for so the bag. Um, but I'm gonna walk into the next town, see if there's a camping shop, see if I can try and fix it. Uh, but that was a nasty surprise. I don't really know what that means, but I'm trying to keep in high spirits. There'll, there'll be a way to fix it, but because of it, it's pulling to the left and it's just the hole on my left side of my body, my knee and my foot, just killing all this extra weight on it. I've tried to amend it with moving straps about, but to no avail. But I'm only a mile, mile and a half away or something like that from the nearest town. Hopefully there's a camping shop there. Ah, oh, that's open. Hopefully there's someone that's open. Yeah. High hopes. It's incredible how little people there are on this walk. I know it's definitely not the right time of year to be doing it, and I also know that COVID stopped a lot of people from coming out. Um, but I said I saw four or five people yesterday on this walk. I haven't seen a single person today. I saw a couple of cyclists on a road that I had to cross, but not walking. I've got all this walk to myself, and it's glorious. And the weather, it's not quite as sunny as it was this morning, it's greyed over a bit, but it's not windy, it's not cold. It's perfect walking temperature. I, like, I couldn't ask for a better day right now. Yeah, apart from my strap, no, that, that kind of sucked. Absolutely in the middle of nowhere. I'm on an uh, abandoned train line between Beverly and Market Wheaton, which is where I'm heading to try and find a somewhere that can repair my bag um, but I like these old trains these abandoned train tracks um, reminds me of the Monsal Trail just with less tunnels but uh, sometimes it's nice they're, they're just straightforward and flat and surrounded by trees so it's nothing exciting but it does give you a break from going up and down hills for a bit can I get your breath back get your energy back yeah, it's just kind of relaxing you do find some mad stuff when you're on a walk in the countryside. Clever. So, here's the offending strap. As you can see, that should be connected to here, but it's not, and it's just pushing the bag all the way to my left. I've got into this town now, but unfortunately nowhere's open. And I'm struggling to think of what to do because I can't carry on with my bag broken like that. I mean, as it is, it's already pushing all the weight to my left, which is destroying my left side, my knee and my foot killed. But it's got a secondary attachment down below. And I'm guessing that's under a hell of a lot more wear right now. And if that goes, then I'm screwed. Luckily, I'm in a town right now 
but if I'm a few miles away, people can say you can one strap it, but you really can't with bags like this. I hate to throw in the towel, but I don't think I've got a choice. I wandered around that town for about another half an hour. I googled places where I could go. I put posts out on Instagram saying, can anyone help me, any advice? And a few people messaged saying I could sew it. Um, sew my strap back onto my bag. Now, the only sewing I've ever done is to put patches on a denim jacket for my biker jacket. So, as much as that might be a good idea, for me at the time, it wasn't, because I had no confidence in my ability to sew that thing back together to hold that weight. But it's just another thing that on these walks I now know I need to learn. I'll keep a sewing kit in my bag, I'll learn how to sew properly so it can hold weight, I'll know what materials, etc, etc. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed that trip. Uh, I didn't get to the finish line, which kind of sucks, but I learned so much. I learned my tent's great, I learned my sleeping bag's rubbish, I need to upgrade that. I learned the fact that I need to know how to sew. I took much more stuff than I actually needed to. I, there's so much stuff in my bag that I didn't use, so I know I overpacked for that last trip. I know what to take. I now know what kind of food I need to take and when to eat that type of food. I know to look for water more. There's an infinite amount I learnt, and that was the whole point of going out there. So I'm seeing that trip is quite successful. But I didn't get to the finish, so I will be back, but probably not until February. One thing I did learn is I love camping, I really do. Just not in December, just not in winter. Maybe a better sleeping bag will sort that, but we'll find out. Until then, back to reality.